This is the identification of unknown powders lab. In the communication game, your, your students have the opportunity to make observations and then communicate those observations to others. This lab, which looks a little more like a chemistry lab, will give your students opportunities to make observations of some unknown powders and then, based upon those observations, make some hypotheses and then conclusions as to what the identity of those powders might be. Because this lab does include some uh, household type uh, chemicals, uh, you'll need to make sure and let your students know your expectations for behavior and safety during this lab activity. We will be using vinegar and then tincture of iodine. The vinegar is a weak acid and because it is acidic it can burn if, gets, if one gets it in their eyes. And then the iodine we have here is a little bottle of tincture of iodine is poisonous and uh, certainly should not be taken internally. Uh, so with that in mind let's begin by looking at some preparation you'll need to do before before class time. The first thing you'll need to do is, is collect a set of powders that you'll use for the laboratory. Some examples include baking soda, sugar, uh, we've got some baking powder, cornstarch is one item that you'll want to use for sure, uh, powdered sugar, if you have any yeast on hand, yeast makes a, is a fun uh, powder that you can use, uh, a hot chocolate mix, a powder of that, and then we also have uh, some uh, instant coffee, powder and sugar, salt, uh, if you have access to a turbinado sugar or sucanat sugar, uh, those make interesting uh, powders to identify as well. In addition to collecting the powders, you'll need to put together your test solutions. And what we have here are some containers that we've identified. Uh, this one says vinegar and then we have another, another container uh, for the iodine solution and then a third for the water. Other items that uh, you'll need to have um, we found that uh, cupcake liners work real nice uh, for the surface for the students to work on as they observe their powders. If you have access to deli papers, these deli wrap papers uh, that you can get at your local grocer uh, deli counter are work really nice for working on and then clean up is uh, easy. And then uh, the droppers, eye droppers, uh, are ideal for transferring the test solutions to the powders. Uh, if you don't have those, uh, soda straws or these little coffee stirs uh, work really nice um, for uh, as droppers. And again, you can find those uh, usually at your uh, uh, local grocery store. So, uh, if we take a look now at the data table uh, that's in your uh, book, uh, you can see that there's uh, each page of the data table is designed for one powder. So, up at the top, there's a place for the student's name, and then there's an identification number or letter that you might give for the powder. So, for example, after you put your set of powders together, say there's you have five or six of those powders, uh, your first one, uh, for example, might be the baking soda, and you may uh, give that as uh, identification letter A, uh, knowing that the students will only know it as A, and you'll be the only one who under knows that it's actually baking soda. Uh, so, what we suggest is that as you uh, begin the lab, is that you go through the powders one by one with the students as a group. In other words, uh, you'll give everybody a sample of powder A, everybody will do the tests on A, and then you can have discussion then or you can wait till the end of the lab, uh, and then move on to powder B and repeat the procedure. 
uh, it's best not to uh, let the students have access to all the powders because then things can get confusing and then some of the interesting observations uh, can you know, sort of be spoiled if one student gets there before another does. So if we look at the data table, uh, it, down the left hand side uh, there are uh, the different means of making the observations and for powder A, uh, if we read across the top there, it says, when I first looked at this unknown powder, it looked like, and in this box right here, uh, the students just make a visual uh, observation of it. And then, uh, when I first looked at the powder, it smelled like. Take a little sniff. You might, uh, if you should choose something like a pepper or a cinnamon or something like that, just caution the students not to get uh, a big whoosh up, the, up in their nose. Uh, it felt like uh, you uh, have them take a little pinch of it and uh, push it, squeeze it between their fingers. Uh, the cornstarch tends to give an interesting uh, sensation when you do that. And then it sounded like, uh, this one sometimes students say, well, it doesn't sound like anything. Uh, but uh, in later observations, they may actually uh, hear some different sounds that these powders make. And the final thing is it tasted like, and you can encourage your student then to just, you know, take a little uh, a taste with their finger and just touch it to their tongue. Now that brings in mind a very important point is that all the powders you choose is to make sure they are certainly things that are safe for a student uh, to take a taste of. Do not use any sort of uh, powdered chemicals or cleaners or anything like that. Detergents, stay away from those. Do not use those because uh, your students will taste them. Now, the, obviously the baking soda, baking powder, does have a bitter taste, which is one of the uh, identifying factors that you'll, um, the students should recognize. Okay, so as soon as they've made visual observations, they'll move to the next column. At the top says, when I add it, uh, drops of water. Again, it looks like, it smells like, feels like. And uh, as they add drops of water uh, with the uh, uh, coffee stirrers or soda straws, they can use that soda straw then to kind of push, push the water around, mix it in, and let them make their observations. Uh, the third column over says, when I add it, drops of vinegar. So they'll repeat the process using vinegar, and then when they add drops of uh, the iodine mixture, they'll make uh, more observations. And then the final column, if there's anything else that they want to note, they can put in this fourth column. Note down at the bottom of the table, uh, after they add water, the vinegar, and the iodine, uh, this last uh, row across that says it tasted like. They only taste the powder in its dry form. Do not, it says here, do not taste after adding test solutions. So that way uh, your students won't ingest any of, the, of these compounds, especially the iodine, that you do not want them to uh, take into their mouth. So uh, what we'll have here then are these uh, containers of the test solutions. And depending on how your class is set up, uh, if you've got students working at tables, uh, you can make one set of these for each table. If it's just you and your family, one, one set obviously is enough. And so in the first cup, you'll have your vinegar. And so we'll just uh, get a sample here of the vinegar for demonstration. And uh, we'll just pour it some here into the cup. And... Uh, and then we'll have uh, water. So I've got another container here for water. And then the iodine, uh, as it comes, this is tincture of iodine that I uh, picked up at the grocery store. You can buy it at the pharmacy. It's concentrated iodine. And you don't need the full strength of the iodine uh, for this lab. And so what I like to uh, tell uh, folks is that You'll make a, a mixture of the iodine, so we'll just put water, and then we'll just pour in a small amount of the iodine. You want it to look like uh, iced tea, kind of the color of light brown color of iced tea. And note that iodine does will stain stain your fingers and hands, and uh, you may want to let the students know that 
if they should get that on them. It certainly does not hurt if it's on your skin. Uh, iodine is used as an antiseptic and uh, also works as antifungal. So if you have ringworm, you can use iodine for it. But uh, in this case, we're going to use it as one of our test solutions. So we've got our vinegar, iodine, and water test solutions. And so then, once you have the test solutions prepared, uh, if you use the cupcake liners or, like we said, the deli sheets here, um, what you can do is just flatten that out a little bit to make a little larger work surface. And then, uh, using a spoon of some sort, you'll, uh, from an uh, unlabeled container, uh, uh, you will transfer then uh, one of the powders out to each of your students. And what I like to do for for this video is just take a sample of the cornstarch and uh, so we'll just go in here and get a little bit of the cornstarch and transfer it here into the cupcake liner. All right, And then using the uh, one of the coffee stirrers here which are you know obviously just little miniature um, soda straws uh, you'll the students if they uh, look back at their data table uh, the first solution they add is drops of water and so they'll just uh, put the straw down in the water put their finger over the end of the straw and then transfer a few drops of water onto the powder and uh, uh, you might want to let your students know if they you know not to transfer the powder back to their uh, test solution uh, container best they can you may find yourself having to refresh these uh, solutions as you work through the lab so uh, having a either jug or a pitcher handy uh, to refresh those might be a, a good idea. So once your students have uh, tested uh, with the water uh, then with a, a clean clean uh, coffee stir uh, the next solution if you look back at the uh, data table is to add drops of vinegar so we'll do the same with the vinegar and they'll probably want to go to a different part of their sample and then uh, mix in uh, the vinegar uh, and see if there's any see if there's any reaction uh, there with the vinegar uh, if you and we highly recommend this uh, to use some baking soda or even baking powder uh, they should get a bubbling reaction there with the vinegar and that's one of the identifying uh, factors there uh, and the, one of the big reasons I wanted to show you the use the cornstarch in our example here is the reaction you'll see with the, with the iodine and so if we take a few drops here and drop it in uh, I think you can readily see we've got a definite color change the uh, cornstarch turns a um, dark purplish uh, blue blackish color which is one of the identifying factors of the cornstarch uh, which students find interesting. Uh, any other product powder that you use that may have uh, cornstarch in it will get you this uh, purplish blue color. Uh, an interesting thing that you may not be aware of uh, if you think about powdered sugar, confectioners powdered sugar uh, it obviously is it's sugar that's been finely finely ground and you would think well it should not give you this positive starch uh, test that um, with the vinegar however in, in many cases uh, powdered sugar uh, in the packaging process is mixed with some cornstarch and I, apparently to prevent clumping of the powdered sugar and uh, so when you go to test if you use powdered sugar as you the students may think well it's not starch therefore we shouldn't get this uh, purple color uh, because of the presence of cornstarch it will give you uh, 
that uh, purple color. So that's an interesting one there. Um, so, uh, and then once you've completed uh, this powder, uh, you'll move on to the next and uh, either use the cupcake liner again or, or the deli sheet and bring around another sample uh, for your students to, to make observations of. And so after about four to, to five, six, however many powders you've decided to use, uh, then with your students you can go back and talk about each powder. Uh, ask them, you know, what did they see? What did they smell? Uh, did, they, did it make sounds? Uh, with uh, baking soda, they may hear the little bubbly crackling sounds when they add the vinegar to it. Uh, the cornstarch is another fun one. Uh, if you mix it with water and they play with it a little bit, they can make a, a rubbery little ball out of it. Uh, the yeast, if you've chosen to uh, include yeast in your um, uh, set of powders, obviously it will have a strong uh, smell and uh, some students may know right away what it is but then after adding water uh, they might find that the yeast actually uh, starts to make bubbles after a while. Uh, the, the dried coffee, if you use that you know, students may find, wow, that's really got a strong bitter taste to it or a strong taste or uh, definitely an odor to it. Uh, if you choose to use uh, a hot drink mix of some sort, uh, hot cocoa, hot chocolate, uh, the results may be interesting because of the combination of ingredients there uh, in, in those products. Um, and then uh, at the very end of the lab, uh, you can reveal the identity of the of the uh, powders that you used, and find out the the students uh, will then learn you know how good their observations were, how close they were, uh, where they may have gone astray. Uh, one item that's in the teacher book is a flow chart uh, that you might utilize or help build uh, up on the chalkboard or, or your dry erase board is how the students did make their decisions uh, and then ident identifications of each of these powders. Again, this lab is designed to be fun. Uh, let your students uh, experiment within reason. Uh, the rule I always follow is if a student wants to try something is to ask first and then if it's within reason and, and there's no chance that um, an accident may happen, uh, let, them, let them go ahead and try. Um, at the end of lab, it's important that everyone helps cleaning up. Uh, as you go through the powders, uh, we suggest that you do not discard the powders right away. Uh, let the students keep them at their tables. They can identify uh, with the letter on each of their um, uh, cupcake liners as to the powder and then refer back to it as they move uh, to the next powder. A uh, fun extension of this lab is to send home a powder. You might make up uh, a small little containers with an unknown in it, send it home, and see what the students uh, uh, come up with for the following week of class.